broken relationships. Amen. Uh, we we talked about how you know we we need to really uh, fix relationships in our life. Amen. Because I strongly believe that if if we fix the relationship in our home, I think the outside of your kids, your your life, a lot of the stuff that's going on in this world right now would not be happening had there be had their, their, the family first was right. Amen. I, I believe that a lot of the stuff that happens is because either there's a uh, there's a parent absent in the home or just just different things. But I wanted us to when when God you know began to speak to me about this series here, it was more. Uh, about what we're teaching also on Sunday on the Christ and their family. It's more of, this pastor said this one time, he said, if the families are right in their home, the anointing will flow so much easier in their life. Amen. But because there's so much stuff going on in relationships, uh, whether it is, you know, uh, the husband and the wife, the children, you know, uh, with the mom with the daughter, you know, the Bible says that in the last days, all of this stuff was going to happen. What we're seeing today, the, the Lord said in His Word that it was going to happen, right? Amen. But as, as pastors, our job is to try to 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 help the families, help the people, um, try to fix these relationships. Because I believe that if, if we don't do our part, we can have healthy families. If we have healthy families in the church, I believe that it's going to help our people outside of the church. Right? Because now all of a sudden you can go out and tell the people that live next to you who do not have the Lord, tell them what you did to get your life straight and how, what you did to get your family back in order. Because I believe that when we get our family back in order, things are going to begin to flow. Right? Right now, if, there, if your life is not in order, if you, you know, if the husband and the wife are just going at each other, there's no peace. And I don't know about you, but when, when I don't have no peace, I can't sleep. I just you, you lose. You know, a lot of times people say, man, I lost sleep yesterday. You know, I couldn't sleep last night. Why? Well, I don't know. I was worried about this, worried about that. Whenever there's something in the home or in the family, you lose sleep. You cannot, you know, you cannot function right. Now, all of a sudden, you go into work, you only slept two hours. And then you go to work, sleeping two hours, you're not going to fully function at work. I don't care who you are. Right? If you work with with big heavy uh, machinery, you can cause an accident. Because all of a sudden you fall asleep up there, like it's sort of like some people do here at church sometimes. I'm gonna say no names, but they already know who they are. So I'm mean, looking at them. Uh, I'm not gonna look at them because then I'll give them away. Right, brother Joe? But. You know, you you know that once you do that, you don't function right. To try to get up in the morning, you know, get up in the morning, it's a struggle to try to get up because you know your day, you know, it's, it's already, you know, I don't want to say started bad, but you know, you're already mad because probably you didn't get your coffee, upset because maybe your wife stayed asleep and made you no lunch, right? Gave you three dollars and you know go buy you a sandwich or a couple of bubble gums and you'll be all right. Walk it off, you know. So all of a sudden your whole day is just like started out, you know, bad uh, because of, of certain situations. But I, I strongly believe that when we begin to do what God really called us to do in our home, and we begin to operate as men of God and as women of God the way God intended us to do. I believe that a lot of the headaches will be gone. Anybody believe that with me? You know, you know why you have a, 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 a pain and, and you know stress. You know why you're stressing out? Because everything that's going on in your house, right? Am I the only one? So you know, I want to I want to kind of just review uh, uh, a little bit on what we talked about last week, uh, as far as. When we look for relationships, we always try to look for personalities in the person instead of character. We need to make sure that we look for characters in a person's life, right? And I told you last week, because we talked about in Matthew chapter, I believe it was Matthew chapter 7, when we spoke about the fruit. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16, if you can just pop it up up there again. 
Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 16, it talks about the fruits. And if, if, if people are not bearing fruits, uh, then you should not be close to them or get too much entangled with them. It says in verse 16, you'll, re you'll recognize them by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or fig figs from thistles? Verse 17. In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. Verse 18. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, neither can a bad tree produce good fruit. What are you looking for in a person's life? If you, a lot of the time, a lot of our, our mistakes, I think it is, is that we always tend to look for the outside of a person's life, right? We go for looks. It is very rare that you go for a person's uh, uh, character or how they are. Man, you look, you look for a... a there's used to song, they used to be a, a Mexican song, and those of you who are Mexicanos, y'all know this song. Había una canción de Mexicanos que decía, La suerte de la fea, la bonita la desea. <laughs> Meaning, the, the love of an ugly woman, the pretty one desires it. Because if you get a pretty woman, sooner or later they're going to go. If you get your ugly one, ain't nobody going to want her, so you stuck with her. That's basically what the song was saying. You know that's 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 basically what the, what the song was saying. So if, if if you if you you know if you are the kind of person that are just looking, you're waiting, you just you want you're looking for a relationship. But if you're just looking for looks, let me tell you something. It's not always going to stay pretty. Right? Come on, somebody. <laughs> you have to look at the person in the internet. You can look at the prettiest person, and she can be a devil herself. <laughs> and you get with that person because of her looks, but not, next thing you know, you got Satan. You're sleeping with Satan. <laughs> and now you got to sleep with the bat or a knife in your hand because you don't know at any moment Satan's going to be revealed. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> So you you cannot you know Fiona turn turn once midnight comes you know once that makeup comes off wait over there can you sleep with the makeup on please <laughs> but a lot of us look for the wrong things in people's lives and that's why that's why there's so much failure in relationships that's why there's so much failure in the home why because a lot of times you get married for the wrong reasons. And I know, I know it's going to be hard, and I know that ain't no amen, but I know I'm telling you the truth. That a lot of times we get we get together with the person for the wrong reason. And the last person that we kind of, the last person that we talk to is God to see if that person is ready for us or not. Amen? And you're like, man, I thought that was the one. You thought, but you never went to God. You never asked God if this is the one for me. And he probably threw a lot of red flags. There was a, probably a lot of red flags that when you're in love, you'll always see every red flag, right? Because all you see is hearts. And that little, that little, what do you call them? That little um, Cupid. Somebody needs to shoot him. Because sometimes, because sometimes he's shooting at the wrong things. You don't know that that cupid could be used by the enemy to try to entangle you. Because listen, if you get connected with the wrong person, then you'll never fulfill what God called you to do. Why? Because that person is going to come against you every single time. Amen. Amen? And the, you know, if the person is with you, you know, if she tell, if she helps you to become who God called you to be, you know that that person is right there. That's that's the right person. Why? Because she's helping me to become who God called me to be. So. We have to make sure that when we look for somebody, that's what it says, you'll know them by their fruits. Listen, you can, what, the Bible says that whatever's done in the dark, it will be revealed in the light. The light will always expose whatever's done in the dark. Nothing, the Bible says that nothing can be hidden. You can probably do it, you, you'll probably, a lot of people that have, you know, why did they get caught? They didn't get caught right there and then. A lot of them started doing it two months ago, three months ago, started stealing money or whatever. 
sooner or later, they're going to get caught. Because nothing is, is gone here. God is a God of justice. And He will do justice. Amen? So listen, get to know the person. Get to know the person. Or even in just in your relationship, let's work things out so that way this relationship... Because listen, it is so easy, I said this before, it is so easy to walk away from a relationship. I mean, that's the easiest thing that the enemy does. Walk away. Just throw away, you know, however many years you've been together. The enemy will come in and tell you. And the bad thing about it is that the enemy will use people to come in and tell you, you don't need him. Why do you need him? Hombre está bien menso. Hombre, look at him. You don't need that person. You don't need this. You don't need that. You, you need to, what you need to do is stop going to people and go to God. Right? Because when you, when you go to God, you know, about concerning relationships, you'll never go wrong. But when you when you go to, to, to your vecina who doesn't know and then sees that she's bolera, forget it. They're going to guide you in the right and the wrong direction. Amen? So we need to go to God. We need to make sure that there's fruits that are being given, you know, that you see the person. Because the Bible says that you'll know by their fruits. Amen? So it is very important that we come in and begin to search the people, begin to get to know the people. Listen, not everybody that seems good is good. Remember that the devil will come in and send you somebody, like I told you, I told you last, last time I told you about Farrah Fawcett and my wife got after me, she goes, babe, that was way before your time. Everybody's already, you know, everybody's younger now. You gotta go with somebody else. I said, I don't know who else, but, you know, back in the day, that's who it was, you know, the beautiful women. But the devil will send you this, but it's in disguise. Just to try to lure you out, to try to get you out from the calling that God has placed in your life. And listen, a lot of the times you spend years trying to fix what would have never been broken had you listened to God. Why is it quiet on you? A lot of the people spend more time picking up the pieces than living the life. Pieces that should have never been broken. Had we done what we should have done a long time. And we blame God a lot of the times, right? We blame God. God, it's your fault. And God's like, I never told you to go with them. I sent you red flags. Bombs were going off. Fourth of July again. You never listened to why? Because you said you were in love. And how many of you know that if you were like me, when you were in love, nobody could tell you anything. You knew it all. Right? Mom, you don't have to tell me. I know it. I'm in love right now. I don't care. When you're in love, ni comidas. Right? You know that. You didn't eat? now, I'm going to eat. The women too. You didn't eat? now, no más comía un pedazo de una papita. Se te lo fry. Se haciendo la boca chiquita. Pero you got married? No, hombre, tráeme tres platos. No, hombre, just fill them all up right here. Right? When you're in love, you, you don't see no fault in that other person. And when you love that person and you want them for you, and even though there's there's the, the fruits that they're giving you are not the right, you'll overlook those fruits because you're too busy looking at the person, the appearance on the outside, not knowing that there's red flags that that person is not right for you. Amen? Amen? We're trying to fix the relationships. Why? Because we don't, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't want my kids to go through what I went through. I don't. But if they don't see me, if they don't see me loving on her, if they don't see her loving on me, if they don't see, my kids don't see us treating each other right, that's all they're going to do. Amen? If, 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 they're, if it's not being modeled in front of them, you know the TV's not going to tell them. You know, what does the TV show you? Teresa Crow, Why Swap. All this other stuff, all this junk, right? That's what they're, and your kids are too busy looking at that, and, they, and to them, it's okay to do this. Hey, it's okay to send my wife to that other house over there for a whole week. That's a lie. Why are you not letting my house spend the night with nobody else? God had that for me. I'm not sharing nobody. I know sharing is caring, but not my wife. <laughs> so, whatever fruits you see in a person, we have to make sure that we know what kind of fruits the person has before you even entangle with them. Amen? And remember, some of them are fake trees. I mean, we we had the tree that we had here, the Sensitina, from the way. 
the, the, we had some fake treats, right? And you, listen, I went to this house one time, I can't remember what house it was, whose house it was, and I went to the table, and uh, I grabbed one of those um, apples they had there, and I thought it was a real one. Era the ule? Was that hard plastic? And I was like, and it, was, it looked so real. Don't you think that the, 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 the thing that God has for you looks so real whenever the enemy comes and he'll try to imitate to bring you what, what you think is right for you? Right? Come on, somebody. Say something, please. Hit somebody. So, there's some, there's some, uh, there's some relationships that I want to talk to you about and, 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 and I'm going to try to make it quick. I uh, don't want to get out of here too late, but I want to make it quick. And, and, and help me, I don't know if it's a cookie I have up there. The one that I told you last week. You did? Good girl. Everybody pray for Christy. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You need help. You need Jesus. Um, I'm going to talk to you about these relationships that a lot of the times, there's, listen, there's some relationships that you have to nurture, nurture right? You, you have to take care of them. There's some relationships that you just have to drop off. There's some of them that, listen, just because they're walking with you don't mean they're with you. Let me say that again. Just because people are with you don't mean they're with you. Judas was with Jesus. But he wasn't really with Jesus. Because it was behind Jesus' back that he went to go talk to him about trying to get that money to get him crucified. And he was a treasure. He was right. He was walking right there with him. But he wasn't really with him. Some of the people that you're walking with them, some of the people that you're walking with right now are the people that are stabbing you in the back. Amen. Some of the people that you think that you're that, that, that you think they're your friends are really the ones that are getting you in trouble. You know what, what's going on is sometimes the, 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 the people that are, are 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 your friends are best friends to your enemies. And they come and get whatever they can get out of you, and then they'll go back and tell your enemy, or oh, this, she said this, or he said this, and all of a sudden, there's friction, and there's more fights, and there's more this, and there's more that. Amen? Amen. So you have to be very careful who you're walking with. Not everybody's for you. Not everybody's going to be there with you. Not everybody is one. You know, I know we're supposed to love everybody, but trusting, you earn trust. Okay. you got to earn trust. Listen, I love you, that doesn't mean I can trust you. I can love you from a distance. Because if you broke that trust, then I just create, I just made a line that says you have to earn that trust before you can come any closer to my life. Okay. The thing about it is that we're not drawing those lines. We're just letting anybody come and go into our life as they please. So you know what? The enemy, he just throws people to destroy your life. Why? Because you don't have that, 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 Line that says, you know what, you're not going to cross it. You know, a lot of people say, fool me once, fool me twice, whatever. You won't do it? No. The first time you did it, I said, I'm going to draw that line. Why? Because I'm not, I don't have time to be trying to pick up pieces and trying to let you come in. And once I pick up the pieces, you come back and, I, and they're all scattered all over. So, God didn't tell us to trust people. He told us to love people. Okay? So, you can love somebody, but you don't have to trust them. Trust, they have to gain it. They have to gain that trust back into your life. Don't just let people come in and out of your life just like anything. Okay? Because, listen, if they do, anybody's going to want to come in. Anybody's going to want to have access into your life. Sometimes you just got to cut them off. You know what? You're not forming, you're not producing good fruits. That's okay. Because the Bible tells us this. The Bible says, don't waste your pearls on the soil. What does that mean? That means if I talk to him about the Lord and I keep on telling him about what Jesus can do and I keep on telling him, and he keeps on doing whatever he wants to the same thing, that means that he doesn't care what I'm telling him. So he's not taking this serious. But if I go to him and I start telling him the same thing and he begins to grab everything I'm telling him, then he's, he's grabbing a hold of the word, but he's not. So the Bible says, says, don't waste your words on him when he needs them. And a lot of the times, we waste our words and our energy and our efforts on this person knowing that that person over there needs it. And you can spend years trying to convince him and say, God said, I already told you, move forward, move on. And you're still trying to go right there. You're, you're still, there's a lot of things going on. God says, move on. Somebody else is going to listen to it. Somebody else is going to take it. Amen? Amen? And you can't blame nobody. It's your own fault. 
Right? It's our own fault. Look at your neighbor and tell them, it's your fault. He gave us He gave us a free will, meaning to, for us to choose. He said, choose life or death. He said, I'm giving you the opportunity for you to choose. And then he said, choose life. He tells you what to choose, but yet we choose the other stuff. Right. Why is it so easy for us to choose the bad than it is to choose the good? Why, why is it so easy to do bad things than it is to do good? I'm asking you why. Why is it so easy to do the bad than it is to do? Why is it so easy to walk, you know, with the world and walk against the world? And say, you know what? I, I don't do that no more, brother. I'm sorry. No, I stand for this. This is what the Word of God says. Why is it so hard? You know why? Because we're too busy worrying about what other people think. We're too busy worrying about what other people think about us and not, not worrying about what he says. Because you know what? The first thing, everything you do, look on Facebook. It's up there. Everything is posted on media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all this other stuff. And you care. And when somebody does something or when somebody sees it, you want to delete it right away. Why? Because people will come in and talk about you. They'll mess you up through these things. Yeah. Amen? So listen, you're too busy worrying about other people. You need to worry about yourself. You need, to, you need to worry about you, your family. You need to try to fix your life, your relationship at home. Amen? amen. Say amen somebody. Say something, amen. please. Leave me out here all by myself. The number one uh, 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 the people that I want to talk to you, and hopefully I can say it right, is the constituents. The constituents, and this is what they are. These are people... These people are not for you. They are for for what you are. Okay? They're not for, they're not they're not for you. They are for what you are. In other words, these people are only temporary. They come and go. They're not there forever. These people come and go. They draw they're, they're drawn only for a cause. They only come to you for a cause. You, you might say, well, what are you talking about, Pastor? Like if, if, if they can, if you work for a company, they can grab you, and if you're their best employee in that company, and they can grab another person from another company who you don't know, and they put them in the same conference room to try to pick the, pick at their brain, to try to get ideas, and try to get these are people that come together for a cause, to try to help the business, but they're not there forever. They're just there for that very short time. These people will come into your life. You know, they come into your life until something gets achieved, then they're gone. Right? When you get together, they come in, they pick up your brain, you start, you get into that conference room, you start talking about these things, and all of a sudden, you make that business successful, and then that'll be the last time you see that person. Amen? And these people are not forever. They're just there for a season. Our lives are based off of seasons. That's the way God designed our life to be. Some seasons you're going to be way up here. Some seasons you're going to be way down here. Some seasons you're going to be right here. But in every season of your life, you have to learn how to praise God when you're up here. You've got to learn how to praise God when you're here. You've got to learn to praise God when you're here. That's why the Bible says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because He's with me. You're riding your staff. They come for me. Amen? So in every season of our life, we have to learn to worship God. And we have to learn how to praise God in every season of our life. The thing about it is that we, we, we laugh and, we, and we're excited when we're up here. But when we're down here, what do we trust? What do we do? Not knowing that the same God that got you up here is the same God that can get you from here back up here. Amen? So... If, if we just learn how to worship God in the middle of every situation in our life, our life will be a whole lot different. Yeah. Our life will not be as hectic and as, as bad as it were if we learn to worship God. But the Bible says that He's seeking true worshipers that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. What kind of worshiper are you? Are you a sometime worshiper? Are you a I don't feel like worshiper? Or are you one of those that I don't feel like doing it today? I don't feel like doing this today. I don't feel like going to church today. I don't feel like doing this today. 
That means you're a part-time worshiper. He's looking for true worshipers, full-time that will worship him in spirit. Listen, you know, when I tell people, you know, you gotta pray, the Bible says to pray continually, you don't have to be on your knees, you know, 24-7 to be praying to God. You can be walking around, you can do it, do the, do the dishes, do the mechanic or whatever, and you're praying to the Lord in your mind. In your mind. I told I told the sister this yesterday, I said, listen, when you touch your patience and you know, because our, because the schools and the businesses are so, you know, corrupted nowadays that even if you say the name of God, you know, they'll just want to lost, you know, they want to sue you already. I said, I told her, I told her, you know what? When you get with this patience, just in your mind, pray to them and just touch them and say, in the name of Jesus, you're going to be healed, you're going to be delivered. Because listen, the devil don't know that, but God knows your thoughts. Yeah. And he, he hears those and he answers them. Amen? Amen. So, you, these people, you'll need them for, for a season. The thing about it is that we try to keep those people forever, and they're not meant to be forever. There's some people that you're going to keep. There's some people that, that are they're not going to be there for you. And a lot of times, you know what? A lot When, when people would leave the church, you know, I, I, it, it would hurt. But the Lord says, listen, he, 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 this pastor put it this way. He said, you're a bus driver. Okay? He said, in the church, you're a bus driver. You're taking that bus. You're driving that bus. That bus has a destination. He said, in that bus, people get on and people get off. He said, some people are going to get off. It's not your job to get them back on. You just keep on driving that bus because that bus has a destination. There's people that have left this, 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 this ministry. They left. They've gone somewhere else. Some of them just left, plain left. But listen, God says, they're seasonal. Okay? They're seasonal. And you have to understand which ones are your seasonal ones and which ones are your long-term ones. Amen? Amen? So you need them, you need the constituents, but you only need them for a season. The second one is called the comrades. The comrades, these are against what you're against. These people are against what you're against. They come together for a common entry. For instance, U.S., they had enemies. Russia, it, it, you know, at one point was an enemy of the United States. But Russia and the United States came together to try to fight ISIS. So the comrades will come in for a common cause for, to try to defeat something that is greater and bigger. And you have some people that are going to come into your life that are going to help you fight something bigger, but then they're going to go. They're just going to come in for that one season, and then they're going to go. They're not meant to stay forever. You have to learn to identify these people. Those are the comrades. They're going to come in. They're going to help you fight that big old giant that you're facing. And then they're going to go. Amen? So these people, you don't want to keep them forever. They're just for, 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 for a short term. Now the third one. This is something that we all need. Which is the confidant. These people, these people are into what you are. You're into these people are for you, okay? Therefore, what you have, therefore, you know, whenever, when these people are the people that are for you, not for what you have. You have people that are with you because of what you have or what you can give them. If you don't give them nothing, they're going to go. So these people here, the confidence, they're, they're, they're the ones that are going to stick there that when you come into a room and you share with them, or your testimony is that you just had a victory, they'll drop everything that they're doing to come in and celebrate with you. They're the ones that are going to be there. When you when you get a victory, it's like they just got the victory. They'll stop whatever they're doing, and these are the people that you can probably count them in your hand that you have. You don't have very many of these people that will celebrate when you are victorious. Because a lot of the people, all they want to do is they want to tear you down. It, it, and it's sad to say that it, 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 a lot of it is done, it, it, it happens in the Mexicanos. The Mexicanos, sometimes we can't see somebody else succeed. We want to try to get them. And we'll try to do everything it, with, that's within us to try to push that person down so that way we can get up. Amen? Amen. But the, 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 the confidence, they're going to be there and they, they're going to they're gonna rejoice when you rejoice. Listen, if you, if you have a victory, they have a victory. Amen. If you're crying, they're going to be crying. If you're defeated, they're going to be defeated. If you're going through something, they're going to go right there with you. They're going to be right there with you. The Bible says, cry with those, with those that cry. Rejoice with those who, who rejoice. And you don't have a whole lot of people like this. A lot, of the, a lot of the people that you have sometimes is when you're going through a bad thing, they're there to comfort you, but at the same time, they're telling somebody else 
about your mistakes and about your faults. They can be hugging you, but at the same time, they can have that knife in the back and just... Come on, somebody. And these people here, we all need these people in our life. We need these people. Without these people, listen, you will be left isolated, depressed, empty. You will not have anything. You need a, a person that will be there with you every single day. That when you're up, they're up. When you're down, they're down right there with you. They'll never leave you alone. They're always going to be there with you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. They're, they're going to be there with you. They're going to grab a hold of you. They're going to see the way it's going to be all right. We're going to get the victory. They're, they're going to lift you up every single time. They're going to try to lift you up every single time. Those people are the ones that you need in your life. You don't need somebody to say, no, you have to hello. No, this, that. no, no, no. You need people to say, you know what? It's going to be all right. Get up. Let's go. Yeah. That's, a, that's what I tell people when they come into me and they're coming right away. I don't mess around. You coming to me to tell me something, I'll tell you first thing, stop crying. Mm -hmm. Stop crying. Right? Why? Because crying doesn't get us nowhere. So I tell them, stop crying, get up, dust yourself up, let's go. Because there's still more road to walk. Amen? We don't have time to, to, to be, you know, we don't have time to be having, yeah, but you know, I, that's okay. I know God, and I know what God can do. So they just... I get, you know... I can, I can either pat you on the back or lead you the way you need to go. Amen? Amen. A mentor, a mentor, and I talked about this the last, on, on the last series that I said, a mentor is somebody who's going to be there with you, but it's somebody who's not going to pat you on the back. Listen, if you did something wrong, I'm going to come at you and I'm going to tell you what you did wrong. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what to do to correct it. I'm going to come in and just get you on the back and say, it's okay, it's all right. No, I'm going to tell you what you did wrong, and this fix it, and I'm going to do it again. Why? Because I see something in him. I see something in him. I see something in you. And we want to make sure that you become who God called you to be. But if I keep on just rubbing on your back and telling you, you'll never get to. Why? Because I'm spoiling you. And a, and a mentor will never spoil somebody. A mentor will come and tell you, listen, if you ever had a mentor, they're going to tell you straight out. They're not going to mess around. They're going to tell you, why? Because they don't have time to waste. Because I got people that I need to mentor. I got other people. You're not the only one. There's a lot of people that we have to mentor, and I'm not going to be spending all this time with you. If you don't want to, if you don't want to succeed, if you don't want to be successful, if you don't want to grow, if you still want to be in that rut, if you want to be there, but well, you know what? Then they stay there. Stay there. Move on. So we need these people in our life to help us out. We need to change. Amen? Amen. We, need, we need to, like, we need to want to change. We need to want to change. I need you to grab a hold of this word and put it to work. And, and you know what? Begin to research your life. Okay, what people, you have to do like you do on Facebook. Like every, every once in a while, I'll go on Facebook and I begin to look at my contacts. You know what? I don't need this one in my life. I don't need this one out. Right. You need to do that in your own life. Because there's some people that you're carrying that they're dead weight, that they're no use for you. And if they're dead weight, you're just carrying them. Okay. Amen? You don't need them in your life. I, you know, some people say, Pastor, you don't request me. And I do. I request them. You know, they request, send me a friend request. I'll accept them. But the minute that I see something on there that I don't like, I cut them off. Mm. Pastor, you, you took me out. Yes, I did. Why? I didn't like what you put. And I tell the people, you know what, if you, if you want me to be your friend on Facebook or anything like that, I said, don't be putting stuff that you're not supposed to. I'll cut you off. Amen? Amen. And, and, and we have to understand that we have to do that. David said, Lord, search my, search my heart. And whatever's, not in, whatever's in there that's not supposed to be in there, some of you need to go through your friends. Okay, this one's, there's some people that you, you've been carrying for a while. You need to let them go. Why? Because they're so used to you. What happens if you go? What happens if you die? Getting quiet up in there. Why do we need the comforter? Why do we need these people in our life? Remember, we need, we need the number three. We don't need the constituents or the comrades. We need the comforter. Somebody that you can trust in your life. Why do we need this one? James chapter 5, verse 16. I didn't give you the scripture, sorry. James chapter 5, 16. This is why we need these people. With the fingertips. There you go. 
Therefore, listen, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The word sin there is not really the word sin that we use. Like you committed a sin. The word sin there means confess your weaknesses one to another. Confess your weaknesses one to another. Pray for one another so that you may be what? So that you may be healed. So that you may be healed. Now listen, you will never be healed if you don't never confess. You sin. If you don't bring it out, you know what you know what depression is? Depression is nothing more than I never talked about it. That's what depression is. If a person is depressed, it's because they have something in there that they never told they didn't tell nobody. And they haven't told nobody. And the reason that we need this confidence is because you cannot go confess your weakness to just anybody. And that's our problem with the church. That's the problem with the world. Is that they want to tell their weakness to everybody. And everybody who you're telling is not supposed to know your business. And they come back and they use that against you. That's what the enemy does. The enemy will come in and use your weakness and come and use it against you. Not everybody needs to know. Well, I'm looking for some help. Well, look up to the hills where your help comes from. That's what the Bible says. And it comes from the Lord. Amen? Not everybody, you don't have to tell, I, I told this, this girl one time, because she would tell her business to everybody. I said, girl, what are you doing? Well, I'm just, no. Girl, they don't need to know your business. You can't just, you can't, you cannot just come up to a stranger and tell them, you know what, I was raped when I was three years old. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm 35 years old, I've never told anybody, but I come to tell you, you don't even know who that person is, don't even know their background, don't even know their mom or anybody else, and you just, Putting everything on that person who doesn't even know you. And if that person is not a good person, guess what? He's going to come and target you. And he's going to try to come in and abuse you because you already you already abused. Come on, somebody. So we you don't go and confess your weakness to somebody. You seek a man or a woman of God, somebody that is going to help you. Somebody that's going to build you up. Somebody that's going to tell you what it is that you need to do. Not somebody that's going to come in and use that against you. And try to destroy you. You have to know where you go to. Amen. And not everybody that carries the Bible is a Christian. The devil carries the Bible too. It's getting quiet up here. You have to be very careful who you open up to. You have to be very careful. You listen. Sometimes you cannot even open up to your own family, your own brothers and sisters. You have to be very careful. And it's not that you don't love them, and it's not that you don't trust them, but you just have to be very careful because the enemy will use anybody to come and destroy you. If you have a calling in your life, if God called you to do something, something great, guess what? You have a target. There's a bullseye in your life. And that goes, and there's demons after you. They hate you, and they want to try to destroy you, and they're going to try to use everything in their power to come in and destroy you. That's why you don't trust these people. Why? Because if they have not gained your trust, don't let them inside your house. You know, talk to me, talk to me outside. Amen? You mean? No, I'm not mean. I'm just protecting what I have. Because it took me a while for me to get to where I'm at, and I'm just going to try to let any devil just come in here. People say, Pastor, can you can you can you pray with me? Can you lay some of that anointing? You know how much it costs? You know what kind of hell I had to go through to get to where I'm at? And then you just want me to give it to you and then for you to just to you know not 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 be wise with it or not, you know, begin to act like the devil yourself. You know what hell I went through just to get to where I'm at? You know what? You know how many cars I lost just to get to where I'm at? You know how many houses I lost? You know how much time I lost? You know how much money I lost to get to where I'm at? And you just want me to come and lay hands and, and give you the, the anointing. If you, have, if you have an anointing in your life, if God has placed an anointing in your life, get ready. Because the enemy is going to come and target you. But the Lord says, stand still. The Lord says that after you've done everything to stand, he says, stand again. And then he comes back and says, the just fall seven times. But I say he gets up eight, nine, ten. And then it's not it's not how many times you've fallen, it's how many times are you gonna get up? How many times are you gonna get up? Because a lot of people fall and they just stay down, but they never get back up. 
And when you stay down, it's real easy to fall, but it's very hard to get back up. Anybody can fall. But it's hard to get back up. Thank you, Lord. Look at your neighbor and don't be telling your business to everybody. They come to the Lord. They come to the Lord. Amen. Now, you have, number four, you have your abandoners. You have your abandoners. These abandoners, they start, but they never finish. They'll come in and start something with you, and they'll never stay to the end of things. You have to be very careful. They'll stay with you while the sun is shining, but as soon as something happens, You know how many people I've had in my life come in and say, well, Pastor, I'm with you. Pastor, you can count on me. Pastor, I'm with you. Kind of like a Peter. Lord, I came for you. The minute it got cloudy. Where's that brother? Anybody seen that brother? <laughs> I had this brother at one time, and it's not at this church. It was at another church. I um, I had this brother said, Pastor, I, I got a word for you, church. I, I, I you know, I, I, I got to give this word out. And, and I knew already the brother. I already knew how he was flaky. And he's like, uh, you know, you got to call them what they are. You know, they're flaky. Uh, really, they were heathens. But uh, he said, Pastor, I got a word for the church. And I need to release this word. I said, you do? I said, yeah. And he said, yeah. I said, all right. Go right outside the Monchi's. And I want you to go give that word out over there. He looked at me. Yeah, go outside of Munchie, because there's a lot of people that need to hear that word outside of Munchie. No, but it's, it's for your church, Pastor. I said, no. Go give it outside over there first. No, Pastor. But okay, you want to go to Munchie and grab a vacuum cleaner. No, Pastor, but you don't understand if you just give I'm with you, Pastor. I said, no. <coughs> and I didn't give him the book. And he got upset. But he did that in a lot of other churches. Same thing he tried to do in my church. He did it in the other churches. And he wanted to start by leading without learning how to serve. See, you can never be a good leader unless you become a good servant. Jesus said this. He said, the greatest amongst you is the, the one that serves. And he said, I didn't come to serve. I, I didn't come to be served. He said, I come to serve. So this person... Weak, he was gone. He looked around and said, Where, where's that brother that was here? They had the word. He's like, he's gone. He was down the street trying to give the same word to somebody else. If you cannot submit to the leadership, there's problems. Amen? These, these abandoners are coming in. Whenever they see, they, they, whenever trouble arises, they're out of there. Amen? They're out of there. You won't see them no more. After that, you have number five, the critic. The critic is self-righteous. These critics, they think that their information is good enough that your what you say is has no meaning. And these people are always right. And they're never going to be wrong. And you can tell them these are the people that you need to get away from. They think they know it all. Anybody know anybody like that? I can name a couple of people. They think they know it all. They think they can come in and tell you what to do, even if they don't know. Now, I, I'm not I'm not calling my son a critic because he's not a critic. But, you know, I tell my son, son, if you're ever going to come to me with something, make sure you get the facts right before you come to me. I said, because I always do a research. Yeah, did you know that so-and-so got, got, you know, this player for, for their team? I said, no, they did it. Yes, that they did. I said, son, they did it. That they did. You know, you find everything on, on, on Google. And I said, look, son. Oh, I thought. You thought. You can do a research. A lot of the times we think we're right when we're not right. But, you know, some people just come in and put you in your place. 
Amen? You know, it's okay to be wrong sometimes. It's okay to make mistakes sometimes. Just don't make it a habit. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Okay, you made a mistake. Okay, don't do it no more. All right? So these people think they know it all. You don't have to tell them nothing. You know, you come to them with, listen, I told the people sometimes, we as pastors, we have to become listeners. We can come in and, and if you have a problem, I don't have to tell you nothing. As long as you can come in and just unload. Some people just need to unload. Right? Some people just need to unload with somebody. Because if you try to unload with your husband or your wife or, or family members, they're going to come in and tell you something totally different. But some you, some, some you just need somebody to be there, then you just unload. And I'll feel a lot better. But the critic, no, they want to give you a sermon every time. They want to preach to you every time you tell them something. And they will not accept a no or an answer. So you need to get away from these people. The last one. And I need you to put on your helmet. The, la the last ones are the irresponsible ones. They're the irresponsible ones. Those are the ones that you need to get away from. They are warm. They're fun-loving. Amen? They do care, but they're very difficult to trust. The irresponsible ones have no thought for tomorrow in their heads. They live for the moment and never consider the consequences. The, res the irresponsible ones, you're always getting in for them. The irresponsible ones, you're always getting in trouble for them. The irresponsible ones, you're always taking the blame for them. The irresponsible ones, you're always getting blamed because of them. You need to get away from these people. You need to get away from them. Distance yourself from them. You don't need these people. Amen? You don't need this. You need to get away from why? Because you'll always, you'll always be in that same situation. You'll always try to go out. You're always bailing them out. Always bailing them out. And we need to be very careful. All you need is, what you need to do is you really need to go in your own life. What I said earlier is expanding your life. What friends do you have? Some you need to keep. Some you need to kick to the curb. Okay? Some you need to say, you know what? I, I, I need, there's nothing wrong with telling that person, you know what? I just need to fix my life. And we just have some time apart. I just need to, you know, get my family together and stuff. You're my friend, but I just need to get my, my family comes first. Before you come first, before you, my husband, my kids, they come first. Because it doesn't help me any if I try to build this friendship relationship and my house is falling apart. Amen? Amen. So you need to be, we, we need to be responsible for what God has given us. I have to be responsible for what God entrusted me with. If I'm irresponsible with what He, he entrusted me with, then I have to give an account to God for my actions here on this earth. If I didn't take care of my wife or my kids, then I have to give an account to God. Amen? It, it, listen, if you didn't do it, I told the people, okay, you didn't do it before, that's fine. What's going to happen from this day forth? Are you going to do it now? Are you going to take it? Because now that you know, Jesus said this, listen, Jesus told the people, it would have been better for you not to know me than to know me. Because now that you know me, now you know what I expect from you. Right? So now that you know the Lord, and now that you came, if you weren't a good father, or if you were not a good mother, then let's change things around. If you were not a good wife, or if you were not a good husband, then let's change it. Amen? Because you have, you have all these kinds of people that will come in and try. You have these bossy people. They don't let you get a word in. They want to have the last word. They want, you know, they want to come in and tell you. They want to come in and tell you how to run your house, and their house is falling apart. Come on, somebody. You need to get away from these people. Why? Because they're going to run your life. They're going to try to run your life. So in order for us to fix the relationships in our life, we have to learn to, instead of going to these other people, why don't we just go to God? Just take it up to the Lord. Because prayer does work. I said prayer does work. If you, if you really believe in God, prayer will work. Listen. Sunday, we had all the families up here. We had all, I mean, this whole place was full up here. And if you remember, when I was up here, I said, whatever it is that you need, begin to speak it out. 
If you need help with your kids, speak it up. If you need help with your finances, just begin to say, God, I need help with God, I need my kids to be, I need, I, I begin to say, speak it up. And there was a couple that was here. There was a, there was a couple that was here. And they, what they did is the lady began to call the name of her kids because they didn't have a relationship with them. And she began to call their names out. And she said, you know what? I have nothing to lose. I'm just going to call their name. And she began to call their name out as she was as, as she heard me saying it, she began to call those names up. And when they left here, they, they were taking care of some kids, and they left here, so again, they're from, they're from uh, another town. They went to the park to take these little kids to the park so they can play out there. Well, it just so happens that when they took the kids to the park, their son was out there. They found their son at the park, and his son, their son came and hugged her, his dad, and said, Dad, I just want to tell you that I love you. Said, Dad, I want to try to get our relationship right. I, it just, it happened in the in daytime. In the morning, we prayed. She spoke the name. And at night, God answered right there. How awesome is God? It's when you put your faith out there. When you really believe God and when you really trust God, there's nothing impossible for you. Is there anything impossible for God? No. no. Listen, on Monday, on Monday night, Monday morning. Monday morning, I was in here praying. And and we usually keep the church open till 8 o'clock in the morning. And I was here and praying. There was about three minutes, four minutes till 8 o'clock. And I was sitting there and received a phone call. And it said, Pastor, are you still at the church? I said, yes, I'm still here. They said, okay, I'm, I'm heading over there right now because I have something to give you. I said, okay, so I stayed here. And when she got here, I started ministering to her and I started talking to her. And then I started giving her word of, of some things that she was she was sharing with me. And then she said, Pastor, the Lord told me to come in and give you this. He, he just wants me to sow this into you and your wife's life. And she gave me a check. And she sold it into our life. She gave me a $200 check. She said, Pastor, here it is. And I said, okay. So I grabbed it and I said, let's pray for it. Every time somebody, somebody sows a seed, I always pray for it. That's the first thing I do. I said, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you know what she needs. Father God, if it's finances, you bless her with finances. God, whatever she needs, God, you know how to bless her. Maybe it's not finances. Maybe it's something else. God, whatever it is. And she, and, and, and she left the church that morning. And two hours later, maybe two or three hours later, she sent me a text and said, Pastor, you will never know what I eat. She said, you, will, you can't never imagine what just happened to me. I said, what happened? She said, I got home. This lady came to my house and gave me a $250 gift certificate. <laughs> she sold two hundred dollars. God gave her two hundred and fifty dollars right there within three hours. Amen. How great is our God? Yes. How awesome is our Amen. God? If you just put your faith in God and know that my relationship is going to work, you have to call. That's what the Bible says: call those things that 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 that, that are that are not as though they are. Yes. Why? Because my relationship may not may not be good, but I already see it good. Amen. I already see me and her, you know, uh, uh, being all lovey-dovey when we used to not be, you know. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I see myself holding my wife and hugging each other. We see, I see myself, you know, going out on dates, just me and her. I see this relationship going. I see my kids, you know, like 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 the, like the way they're supposed to be. If you don't see it in your spirit, in your mind, it's never going to happen out here. Because out here, all you see is how they are, how they act, their attitude, their character, and all this. And you say, nobody, that's never going to work on him. Well, he works on you. <laughs> and it, it, listen, you have to have faith and believe that God is going to fix your relationship. Yeah. Are you trusting God? Are you letting God come in and be the center? God has to be the center of your relationship in your marriage. God has to be the center of, of your home. He has to be there. He has to, if he's not anywhere there, then you know what? You're up for destruction. He needs to come back into the home. He needs to come back into the relationship. Why? Because the Bible says that a threefold cord, you, your wife, and the Lord, three. The Bible says that a threefold cord is not easily broken. It's not easily broken. You have to get back to the basics, and that is you have to get back to praying and believing that God is going to fix your marriage. I don't believe it. That's your problem. You don't believe it. I don't think God can, but that's your problem. Because if He created this whole earth, then He can fix the marriage. He can fix your relationship. 
he can, he can fix it. And it starts with who? Who does it start with? God, before you change my husband, change me first. God, before you change my wife, change me first. Why? Because when you change me, I'll see them like you see them. Amen? God, change him. Change him, God. God said, I want to change you. You a burro because you married a burro. <laughs> right? Yes. I mean, if you call him a burro, that means that opposites attract. I mean, no. Mira este tonto, Señor. Tú también te embarcaste con él. It just makes you as bad as they are. But God can change people. God can change people's lives. God can change the situation. You just have to learn how to trust God. Amen? And it's not just saying it, but it's believing it. Believe that God is going to change your relationship. And you need to go in and say, you know what? I don't need these people in my life. You got to go. Cut them off. Right? Because the Bible says that a tree that does not bear fruit, what does it do? They cut them off. They're not bearing fruit. They're just dead weight. They're just occupying space. You don't need nobody to come in and occupy space. If they're not producing, almost kick them out. Amen? I'm talking about your friends. I'm talking about your husband. Try to work it out with your husband and your wife. Give God a chance. Give God a chance. That's what I tell people. Listen, before you would do it, give God a chance. Let God come in and do it, and let God come in and try to fix it. Amen? Don't try to look for love. Let God bring it. Listen, you know what? I heard this today, and I heard a preaching today. And he said this. The pastor said this. God created Adam. He created Adam. God didn't create Eve. He created Adam. God formed Eve. Okay? God formed Eve from the rib. Now, listen very closely. God formed Eve from the from the rib. Then he brought her to Adam. What does that tell you? That God's going to bring you the person that you are supposed to have. Stop looking for the people. You get with God and God will bring the person to your life. Amen? He brought her to him and he said, Here's you. What did Adam say? Whoa! Man. That's what he called her. Yeah. <laughs> this guy? Yeah, I kind of saw it go over like that. Yeah. We have to let the mistake that we that we have sometimes is that we go looking in the wrong places. Sorry. Flashback. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Amen. Y'all know it. I see some of you already going like that. It, 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 you're trying to find something, and if you go look for it in the wrong place, more than likely you're looking for destruction. That's all it is. I know God can do miracles. But man, it's going to take some time. Some of it is going to be heavy. You know, yeah, you gotta be carried right now, Pastor. You look for it. Right? Let God bring those people. Even friends, let God bring those friends to you. You can talk to whoever you want to talk to. Just don't don't begin to spill your whole life. Especially at the job. If you listen, women, if women and men, don't tell the opposite sex your problems at home. Men, if you go tell your women, uh, the women at your job, your problems that you have at home with your wife, you're looking for trouble. Because the minute that she comes and tries to caress your back, but just touches you like that, that's it. That's all it takes. Nice. Ooh, why do you feel that at home? Ooh, why do you, she don't talk to me like that at home. And all of a sudden, your mind starts changing. 
come on. Uh, you know what I'm telling you the truth? I've seen it happen so many times. Same thing with the, with, with the girl. You don't tell that guy your problems. You don't tell that guy everything you're happy with your husband. Because guys only want one thing. And that's all their mind thing. And they're going to tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. They're going to bring you the rose. They're going to bring you the melted chocolate. They're going to bring you whatever it is they're going to get you. Just to try to lure you away and to try to get you away. I was going to say something. I'm going to say My mom said if I don't have anything good to say, don't say it at all. Amen. Did I say it? No? You sure? And what? You know that old saying that they have. Why are you trying to get to the milk? And you got the cow at home. Why are you trying to go to somewhere else? Why are you trying to jump fences? It's a septic tank over there. <laughs> looks, can, looks can be deceiving. You know what I'm saying? That pipe is going to bust and you're going to be smelling pretty. So, be very careful who you choose. If you didn't choose the right one before, hey, okay, you made a mistake. Take yourself back up. Start over. A lot of people said it's too late, Pastor. Train pack, don't worry, there's more than one train. More than one fish. Now you're not going to have seven fishes at the same time. You're going to have one. Amen? Amen. If you made a mistake, just get up and dust yourself off. Just walk, don't make a mistake again. Learn how to communicate. Learn how to... Learn how to cherish what you have right now. You know? Don't like... I don't like what I have right now. I think I'm going to change it. It's not a TV station. If she's there, keep her. Try to work things out. If he's there, keep him. Try to work things out. Amen? Amen. Unless they're beating you black and blue, then flee for your life. <laughs> I said for your life, because nowadays the girls hit too. Yeah. Before the guy was hit. Now, girl, you hit a girl, you better watch out because there's another punch coming and harder. And you know how girls fight. <laughs> hey, Amen. I, I, that's not seen girls beat up on guys. And I just sit there and watch. I was like, wow. It, 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 it happens. So be very careful. Try to work things out. Try to fix the relationship. God is the only one that can put everything back together. Amen. If you let God do it, God can fix everything. And then whatever. See, when God fixes something, when He puts it back together, it's like if it, it was never broken. Amen. And you try to look for the little cracks, or, you're not going to find it. Why? Because when He does it, He does it. Isn't that amazing? Amen. How good our guys. Thank you, Pete. Praise the Lord. Thank <laughs> you.